Hello everyone, I am Tacit and welcome to the Gems of War campaign 18 week 1 day 1. Of course, a brand new campaign we just had started as of uh, today. Uh, main thing is the new angel gem coming in. It is an unmatchable gem that gives you bless when uh, taken, which will be around for the next uh, 10 weeks as far as falling randomly from the sky. Uh, the stuff I get from it, pretty underwhelming, though. Um, this is actually among one of the weaker season passes we've had in, uh, ever? <laughs> as far as, like, usability. Uh, for one, the angel gems aren't that good. Um, they're not as bad as something like, let's say, bomb gems, but they're pretty close. Uh, they're actually more comparable to booty gems, where, like, yeah, they're okay, but there's just not much of a use case for them, especially relative to the troops that end up utilizing them. Uh, aren't really anything particularly special. Um, so yeah, I don't really foresee it really getting used much as a mechanic. I'm not sure if we're getting anything else during the season that will kind of change that a bit. But, uh, last I checked on, uh, Terran's world as far as all the troop spoilers and everything, it doesn't seem like we're getting a single good troop that utilizes angel gems. It's definitely not in the season past, <laughs> but, um, I'm not sure if it'll, uh, if we'll just randomly get one or maybe some other new mythic on, um, some, uh, month will end up getting something useful for it. But as it currently stands, uh, it is a pretty useless gem type. Even cursed gems are going to be more useful. Just because of the wide array of uh, things that actually end up utilizing it. Most notably, that one Void Dragon thing. Or not the Void Dragon. Gosh, what's he called? Not the Void one. Um, I don't know what the one weird one is from Karakaroff. Anyways, um, game plan for today. Let's go test New Journey. So, uh, that'll be one of the main things we'll be doing. And we're actually going to be starting with it. Of course, we ended up getting the uh, small rework to Journey events as of uh, recently. Uh, one, there, there's two changes. One of which they mentioned. The other one they didn't mention. Which I assume is intended, but who knows. Uh, with them sometimes but uh basically also why is my other computer being so slow it's been doing this a lot in the last few weeks i'm trying to get it to update the thumbnail and it is doing so uh, I i've been trying for the last 10 minutes to, <laughs> to get this thing to update the thumbnail because it still says yesterday's and uh it is going very slowly probably by the end of the stream the thumbnail will be updated <laughs> at the rate it's going but anyways uh this thing has one higher gem spawn and um and uh, the level scaling on Journey is a little bit lower now. So we're going to be going with a bit of a uh, Rush Queen of Tanya, uh, as far as build is concerned. I actually kind of want to run this guy in first slot for these earlier ones. I want to go all in Rush uh, build for this. And we will have to switch eventually to um, either a Man Accumulation weapon or that one other purple weapon that creates a ton based on purple allies. But initially I am going with uh, Fiend Fire just so that we can end up applying Fairy Fire for when we go for double Queen of Tanya. So we'll go Fiend Fire, Queen of Tanya, Queen of Tanya. Once that stops killing, like that cycle of things stops killing, we'll probably go for it. Uh, go for uh, the switch out on weapon. But for now, this should be fine. Uh, as long as Queen Tanya AoE hasn't fallen off yet, uh, we're probably going to be using it for most of the time. And almost entirety of today, probably. Because I don't think it'll fall off at any point. And we're going to rest this guy in first law. He doesn't have any score reduction, but for these earlier fights, it shouldn't really uh, matter at all. But yeah, let's go get into it. And then we'll switch out Fiendfire when applicable. But uh, for this stream, I don't think we're going to need to. Uh, it should be enough. Because the main thing that we care about at the lower range is killing everything simultaneously. So this should last for the good first, like, 20, 30 fights. Before uh, we need to switch to something that can scale better. Uh, because you have to keep in mind, the scaling of these battles are a lot slower now compared to what it was before. So we shouldn't have to deal with as many uh, annoying things. But of course the scaling will still get way above what um, this journey trip can handle. But I don't know, let's we'll have to see. See if the tweaks actually made that big of a difference. Oh, that's the only problem, though. He does block himself on mana. That's a factor to consider. Anyways, hello, everyone. Hope all you guys have been doing well. Hello, Tyrion. Hello, Mark. Hello, Genki. Uh, hello, Logic Sire. Hello, Draco. Hello, Daddy Shark. Hello, Crisp. Hello, yeah. Hello, Supernova. Hello, Cookie. Hello, uh, yeah. Hello, Chad. Hello, Mark. Uh, hello, Sushi Ninja. Hello, uh, Draco. Hello, Cookie. Hello, everyone else. Hello, Logic Sire. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, let's go to this journey. So, of course, Journey still plays the exact same way. It's just the level scaling is going to be a little slower. Um, but everything else about it is exactly the same. Yeah, we already got a Bow Raven. Right, and one nice thing about Enchant is we automatically get our mana too. Just filling it everywhere. Love to see it. Which is kind of funny. I'm using uh, Queen of Tanya Fairy Fire team. But uh, I'm actually not even casting Queen of Tanya. We're not actually deep enough to get away with it. Also, hello Defiant. Welcome, welcome. The ball's been well. Okay, so this raid we're just going to kill with skulls. Uh, oddly enough, we do have a skull route for mystics. Um, I don't feel like it's worth using. But there is a pure skull team you can get away with under pure mystic. 
There's enough things to actually compose a skull team. I didn't bother mentioning it in a video. There's a couple different routes we can end up going. The other one I didn't mention in the video, which I didn't even think of at the time. Um, the Doomed Glaive. That one, like, polearm thing. I completely forgot to make any mention of Doomed Glaive. That one weapon that's basically journey troop for purple. Uh, we're not going to need it this early on, though. But later on, it's going to be decently relevant, as it's actually going to be our main man accumulation option. But this early on, it's actually slower due to um, uh, killing two at a time rather than four at a time. One nice thing about this fairy fire, too, I don't think there's too many fights here that have it. But uh, Fiendfire has Curse, so it gets rid of Bless. I mean, it gets rid of um, Submerge, I mean. As well as Barrier. But most notably Submerge. So if any of them do have Submerge, uh, we can actually hit them with AoE. And bypass that. Ooh, that's something we don't have a counter for, though. Time to put Wand on the team. <laughs> we do not have a... No! That one random web hit it exactly as I clicked it. Did you see that? I've never seen that before. Because the time speed thing... He wasn't webbed when I was going for the click, but because of the thing, it was webbed. Like, even if I would have clicked that quick enough, he still would have been considered webbed. But visually, it looked like he wasn't webbed yet because the visual didn't come in from the webbing. Oh no, please, anything get unwebbed. Thank you. That would have been so bad. We could have chipped him down, but still. Uh, I might want to consider a wand. Maybe if I want a man accumulation option, we'll switch into wand later. Because this isn't underspire. We don't have to use a Karakroft weapon. Which is even a Karakroft weapon. It's a bladed lands weapon. For Underspire, we do, but for this mode, uh, we can run any purple weapon in the game. So if we ever wanted to, we can switch to uh, Wand. If we find a battle that's just really annoying, like another web team like that. We likely won't need it in most situations, though, so I'm probably just not going to put it there. But this uh, weapon slot on this team is very flexible. We can run almost anything there. We can run that Doomed Glaive thing. We can run uh, Wand. We can end up running a uh, different damage source weapon. Like Black Manacle or something similar if you uh, don't have the others. As well as that new one that's like Black Manacle. That's technically slightly better than Black Manacle, but I keep not using because it's kind of money locked at the moment. It still hasn't come back yet. It could still be another uh, couple months. I can't remember what kingdom it was associated to. But I know for sure it hasn't rotated back quite yet. Is hello, Bill Warhammer. Welcome, welcome. Oh, there's the Angel Gem, by the way. I think that's the first one we've seen this stream. You have to destroy it to get value from it, though. And this team has no way to destroy. Oddly enough. So unless we can get it off a of Doom Skull or Uber Doom Skull, we're not going to see it with this team. Hopefully we can show it at some point, but I'm pretty sure you guys already know what it does. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just an unmatchable gem that gives you Bless to a random ally when taken. Oh, I should take it to blue first. Nothing too good. It's not horrible, it's just... It's weird that it doesn't count as yellow. I think is the main thing for me. The fact that it doesn't count as a yellow gem is kind of confusing to me. I guess there is some gameplay around it not counting as a colored gem. Because then you could stall it, potentially. But I highly doubt that's ever going to be particularly relevant. Like, in premise, it's a way you could use it. But in practice, it's never going to get used that way. It's just too unrealistic to try to do that by setup. Just to do, like, the four times bless exactly when you need it. While also making sure the enemy doesn't take it. It's just too much work for a mechanic that won't pay off enough. This requires too much setup. So far, uh, I could definitely notice the lack of level scaling. There are in the earlier fights, so these would be easy regardless, but still. They're staying easier for longer. So we are eventually going to reach the point where they start to brick wall every team to be very slow. But it should take a longer period of time now to reach that point. Also, intentional or otherwise, this guy does have a one higher gem spawn. The weird part about him having a one higher gem spawn is all the other ones don't have a one higher gem spawn. So I'm not sure if this is intended and they're just testing it on this one. Or if it's unintended and... Um, yeah, they accidentally did that. <laughs> I assume it's intended and they're just testing it. Otherwise, gosh, is that an oversight? <laughs> but I'm pretty sure they're just testing what it would be like if they had one higher gem spawn this week. So we'll find out. So far, obviously one gem spawn is better than not one gem spawn. 
I haven't noticed that big of a difference with it, though. I feel like shiny level 2 would see a big difference, though. Because 12 compared to 10 is huge. Whereas 11 compared to 10, like, it's nice, but you don't really notice it. It's not a big enough of a change to really be applicable in a lot of situations. Like, it's there, it does help, but uh, it's very minimal. But if that is to change, honestly, that's perfectly fine. 14 mana costs and 12 gem spawn when shiny level 2 actually makes journey troops usable. They're not going to be used to any degree like they were before, where they were like the entire meta for a lot of categories. However, they will see usage. And a decent amount of them. Especially once people start getting like shiny level 2s. Though, of course, we've still been uh, cording over shiny keys. Uh, also, I got asked this on the uh, video earlier today, too. Uh, but the main reason we're hoarding all of our um, shiny keys, for any of you wondering, and why I normally don't mention the drop table every single week for and everything like that, um, I'm mostly holding out for when they add legends and mythics to the drop table. They mentioned that they are very likely going to be adding uh, legends and mythics to the shiny drop table, as well as adding more things to it in the future. Neither of which have happened yet, that are likely both to still happen. Uh, when, who knows, because they're definitely prioritizing PvP this year. But uh, they are eventually, potentially, going to be adding Legends and Mythics. And they're also definitely going to be adding more things to that drop deep over time. Possibly in bulks, like we saw the initial time when they first came out. And because of that, I'm kind of hoarding until more stuff's in. Uh, shiny keys are a weird currency. Like, actually, particularly all keys in the game. Though all other keys you generally open immediately, for the most part. But uh, it's one of those weird currencies where the longer you wait to open it, the better value you get. Uh, and this is mostly due to how the shiny dust system works in the game. Uh, shiny dust is actually very, very horrible value. I forget how many it is. Isn't it like 20 troops or something? It's like 10 or 20 troops to convert to one single shiny token. Like 10 to 20 shiny tokens become one shiny token. If you've already gotten a max one. But um, yeah, it's, it's not worth it. <laughs> like the return value on shiny tokens is absurd. Even if it's 1 to 5, I'm not even sure that's that good. I think it's like a 1 to 20 or whatever it was. But yeah, it's really, really bad. Now, what do we need here? Uh, we'll take that. It basically punishes you for maxing out shiny troops. The best way for them to go about it that they definitely didn't do... Oh, so hello, Isabel. Sorry. <laughs> I was going on a tangent on shiny keys, which I'm still slightly on. But hello, Isabel. Welcome, welcome. But uh, the best thing that they could do for shiny keys, which I'm not sure if they're ever going to do, but it'd be amazing. It's something that they have to do to a lot of drop tables in the game, to be honest. But they should remove shiny dust in its entirety. And then make it when you have fully shiny maxed a troop that it just stops doing that token in drop table. That would make it so much more realistic to actually open shiny keys at any point. But right now, when you get three of a copy, instead of not getting that copy anymore, you just get some shiny dust that basically does nothing. Whereas I could easily just make it so um, it just doesn't drop that token anymore. And then you get the other tokens instead. That would make it substantially easier to shiny everything. Which I'm not sure if they would want to do that necessarily. But with how hard it is to currently shiny everything in the game, at least in the current state of the game, I don't really see it being that big of an issue. As long as they don't make uh, shiny keys, like, absurdly common to get. Because with how they currently come into the game, they, they, you don't get a lot. You get, like, seven a week, a few extra if you put some stuff into PvP. But normally it's better just to put them into deed books. You get so few of them to begin with. That wouldn't have hurt if you just got no duplicates from the drop table on them. Yes, long story short, do not spend shiny keys. <laughs> Unless you see a troop that you know for sure you want to use a ton, and you just really, really want it like shiny level 2. Also, never go for shiny level 3. It's a complete waste. But uh, unless there's a troop you really, 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 really want in shiny level 3, uh, shiny level 2 on, I mean. Um, like, we did that for the dragon and one other one. Oh, yeah, the Strix one. We did for the dragon and the bird. But aside from that, I've never done it for any. And even for those, I technically shouldn't have done it, but they were really meta at the time, so I figured, out oh, why not? 
But uh, long story short, yeah, just never spend shiny keys in the current state of the game. Hoard them for later, which is pretty much the name of like half the currencies in this game. <laughs> Those VP tokens, hoard them for later. Vault keys, hoard them for later. Uh, at least the epic vault keys. Um, unless you're earlier on in the game, you need to loot. Shiny keys, hoard them for later. <laughs> But shiny keys are particularly useful to hoard for later. As we pretty much know for sure they're going to be doing more with it in the future. No, don't run. Wait, what mode are we in right now? We're in journey. It does matter that he doesn't run. But not as much as some game modes. But it does matter. Uh, let's see. Because this game mode still scaled a little weirdly. Well, the difficulty is a bit easier. The scaling's still a bit off. Don't do it. Don't do it. No! Wait, wait, wait. Let's see. Is the glitch still in play? Does him running away not count as running away? The true test. I think this is the first one since the patch. Particularly the patch patch where they did that like little mini patch. Where we have gotten to see if he will still get the sigils. Yeah, we do need him. This is an event where it's actually pretty relevant because scoring's not as good. But let's see. Moment of truth. Does the glitch still work? Do we get two uh, sigils? No, they fixed it. Oh, well, for science. Yeah, you do lose the sigils. Oh, two less battles we have to do. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. We need some kind of, like, other man accumulator on this team. This guy's not cutting it. His one extra gem spawn's not carrying us. Especially when he misses on ability. When he doesn't miss, it's not as bad. Like, right there, we just auto win. But when he does miss, it's kind of problematic. Yeah, Journey score is still a little tight. They didn't actually fix the scoring, I don't think, for Journey event. They just made it a little bit easier to get higher score. But I don't think they ended up fixing how scoring works in any way, shape, or form. And that reminds me, I still haven't updated the thumbnail. Let me go do that. I was waiting for it to load in, and it has loaded in, but I haven't loaded into where the thumbnail thing is. <laughs> I'm not sure what's been up with the side computer lately been extra slow. Might be time to finally replace it after almost 11 years. <laughs> I am never getting rid of that computer until it like physically stops functioning. I don't care if it takes like five times longer to do anything on it until it stops physically working. We'll keep using it. Uh, let's see. Throw that down. There's still a lot of stuff data-wise in there I really need to clean out. I've been meaning to for a while. Everything's backed up on it, so if it died tomorrow, it would be fine. Alright, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Come on, thumbnail, get updated. We're almost there. A big miss. Yeah, that's, that's horrible. Whenever he does that, it's a big problem. Oh, did I just leave Skolder? That's fine. So you should start structuring the team in a way that we don't die on first slot. Get a computer coffin. <laughs> Get an Alienware system. I've actually been using um, MSI recently. Like the last decade or so? I'm not sure why. I ended up picking it up for college, and then the one afterwards I also ended up picking up. Their laptops honestly aren't that good. Like, they're not bad. Like, I've been using them for a little over a decade. But, uh, I don't know. Definitely not, like, the best of the best. I, I, the biggest issue I have with them is mostly the keyboards that they use for their laptop. Obviously, you could just get a different keyboard, which I'm using anyways right now for the main computer. But the keyboards that they have on those laptops, they're supposed to be pretty decent. I have had so many issues with both of them. And both of them have a different set of issues, too. But, uh, I don't know. They're supposed to have, like, half-decent keyboards on them, and they are horrifically bad. They're, like, some of the worst laptop keyboards I've ever used. Obviously, you could just hook up a USB keyboard or a wireless one or anything else, and you're good to go, but still. 
But I had problems with both the two keyboards within the first year of the computer. In both of them. Even though they're shelf life and everything else, and everything, like, component-wise, they're not too bad. It, it, their keyboard is just always so bad, though. There's also just a lot of weird technical difficulties I feel like I have on the newer one, too. That I don't really know how to explain, and I've seen other people online have them, too. And on every single thread that I've seen that issue, I've never seen anyone have any answer for them. Like, for example, my cap lock randomly spams the little hyphen button sometimes whenever I have cap lock on. And I've seen multiple people online, like, have that problem, and not a single person anywhere, from what I've seen, has any solution to it. I assume it's, like, some kind of program in the thing or something. It just magically started doing it after a couple years. I have no clue what in it is doing it. <laughs> but sometimes my cap lock, not even always, just occasionally, my cap lock will start spamming the hyphen button. Or whatever that one little thing is. Anyways. Let's see, is it doing right now? We can check right now. If I click cap lock, it probably won't right now. It doesn't always do it. Let's see. Yeah, that. I'm not sure why it does that. <laughs> like, why? Is, is this some, set to some kind of other function? Some other button on this thing? But yeah, that's me clicking my cap lock on. This is what cap lock on does for my computer. It doesn't turn on cap lock. It does that. <laughs> I literally can't use cap lock sometimes. And I have no clue why it does that. There's a few other just weird things like that, too. I probably have a fix, but from what I've seen, I have not seen any. Like, obviously something somewhere is doing that. <laughs> It's not normal for a cap lock to do. I just have no clue what the solution is. And everyone online I've seen also has no clue. Anyways, uh, what am I doing? So, we finished out, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> because we lost the Vow Raven, we're done with, uh, Journey Event now. Uh, overall, it's a little bit hard to tell just from the first Journey Day, because this day's always easier to do. But, uh, it wasn't that bad. But obviously we haven't scaled to the really high end yet. But it does scale there slower, so, that's a plus. Is this fixed journey event all the changes they did today? Honestly, probably not. Uh, oh gosh, thank you, Eloko, for carrying us. It, look, Eloko, have more gems. T it, take my Val Raven's worth of gems that I missed. <laughs> gosh, Eloko is killing it. I'm so glad he's back in the guild. He's like the MVP of MVPs. Thank you so much. Make up for our Val Raven loss. Thank you. <laughs> if he keeps going that much in the first place, we'll give him 25 gems every week. <laughs> if he like overkills it that much. I try to most of the time whenever someone goes like super beyond. Just to help them pay for the gems that they spent. Because obviously they bought a lot of sets. But um that's yeah, really helpful. Like I think he's like double over second highest. Where is he? Let me go check. Um yeah, he's pretty much double over second highest in our guild right now. That's insane. Where are we right now? We're like dead center. We did lose a Val Raven, unfortunately. We should be right here with the 31 peoples. Well, we did lose our Val Raven there. But oh well. It happens sometimes. Anyways, uh, in other news, uh, but yeah, that's the journey event. Overall, it's still a little bit hard to tell after just one day if the rework was okay. But uh, it's at least a step in the right direction. I still hope they tweak journey a little bit more in the future. Um, while the change they made today, or technically two changes if you count it as that, is beneficial, I feel like long term it still needs a little bit more adjusting than where it's at right now. But um, it's at least better, if nothing else. But anyways, you know what time it is, and we actually won yesterday. Also, I'm feeling a 5 this time. Wasn't it 5 this last time, too, when it was like this kind of layout? There's no way we're going to get back-to-back. -back. Uh, didn't we just do this last night, too? But it's time to play Guess That Door! <laughs> uh, let's see. Guess That Door! Also, why is it magically not lagging anymore? <laughs> I like how it's not lagging at all all of a sudden. It's so weird. Now I'm doing this poll thing, and not a single thing lagged at all. Yeah, I'll go try to copy-paste the redeem code later, and it'll take, like, two minutes. <laughs> anyway, let's go uh, do these fights. Oh, I'm set to Zulgoth right now. You know what? For all time's sake, let's go run Zulgoth insta-kill. This team's still insanely good, by the way. This team hasn't fallen off. Um, this is still really relevant on super high-stat enemies. Uh, the problem is there's just very few locations where you naturally do that these days, where you're allowed to use anything. Uh, the only location that really happens these days where that's applicable is Underspire. I mean, sorry, Underworld. Uh, but aside from Underworld, there isn't really much of a use case for this team. Because there's better for Explore 12, there's better for, like, pretty much everything now. Uh, it's only really good when stats start to get really, really high. And when I say really, really high, I'm talking like 400, 500, I guess even 300 to some degree. But I'm talking like 400 plus kind of stats is when this team starts to really shine. And it's kind of slow these days for running something like this that's slightly lower stats. Not that these are, like, really low, but you know. Low compared to the threshold at which this is really good compared to Stellarix. And obviously if you don't have like the Stellarix quick kill build. Um, 
something like this can still run you through uh, pretty much the entire game. Uh, Zulkov Catherics, while not the easiest of things to get, aren't actually particularly hard. Uh, actually, aren't they both 8 power orbs? Yeah, Zulkov 8 power, uh, Catherics 8 power. And you slowly get them over time. Uh, the main way that you get basically guaranteed ones are holiday events. But uh, you passively get them through doing just about anything in the game. Particularly Volt Wee Guns. Because all your orbs you can convert into power if you want to. But yeah, for 16 power orbs, you get yourself uh, a team that can run through any scaling. Alright, what's the poll currently at? Okay, a lot of people don't believe in 5 today. But what is the highest voted? It's getting a lot less votes than last time. 4 is the lowest. And 6 is middle ground. Hmm... I'm not sure how I feel about that. Five's definitely going down. I right, know it's even on four and six. Five still seems to be the MVP, though. Hmm, I'm almost feeling a four now. Four is making more of a lead. And then tied, and then lead. <laughs> the vote count's too tight. Ah, uh, let's see. Hmm. Five is winning. Should we double door today? Hmm. You know what? Let's do a repoll. Let's get six out of the equation. Four or five. We're going to have a guest the door round two. I've never done this before. But, uh, guess the door. Head to head edition. <laughs> Alright, four or five. We've never done this before. Four or five. We're getting rid of six. Which it means it's 100% going to be 6. But, um, 4 or 5 only. I want to say. <laughs> We're going for our first head-to-head -head for Guess the Door. <laughs> the true test. I I'm actually surprised I haven't done that yet. This is the first time we've ever done a 1 versus 1 door. We've done 3, we've done 4, we've never done 2. <laughs> Watch, it's 100% going to be 6 because we don't even have it in the uh, poll. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's still really tight. This is why I wanted to try doing the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> this, this data doesn't help me. They're both at 50%. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. It has even more votes than the other one somehow. Yet it's at dead 50-50. <laughs> yeah, should I go get a random number generator? <laughs> that's really funny. Five did technically win last time. But I don't know. I have faith in four. There's no way it does the same layout twice, right? Because this is the same way we got a perfect last time. There's no way it would double center us. Because we just got a perfect like this like a day or two ago. Hmm. Hmm. I just need to click one. Let's see, how about this? I, I know a weird way to do it. I'm gonna open gold keys one at a time. Wait, what's the drop rate on it? I'm gonna have to do a lot of these, wait. Um. Yeah, I'll do it based on this. Gold, we go left. Souls, we go right. Glory, we take whatever the highest is on the pole is at the moment, which is also five. So five has like a 66% chance now. <laughs> Unless the poles start shifting. Okay, I'm going to do these one at a time. Gold is left. Let's see. Okay, this might take a while. Never mind. Actually, there's a better way of doing this. Let me open 50, but let them go one at a time. All right, gold is left. Uh, souls is right. Glory is whatever the pole is at. <laughs> there's a way to quick do them quicker, but still do them one at a time. All right, come on. Gold left, soul's right. Glory is whatever highest pole is. I might exclude the glory. Oh, we got souls! It is five. Five has one. Alright, go. Yes, it was five! <laughs> There's no way that worked! <laughs> but we actually got back to back, say one. Okay, let me just use a safer team. Well, it like we can use, lose it, but... You know what, yeah, we'll, we'll stick with this. Give this team some shot for once. We we haven't used it in ages. Wow, we got back-to-back -back same layout. <laughs> no way that strategy worked, though. That's really funny. 
the gold keys have spoken. <laughs> as well as the poll. The poll was correct as well. Oh yeah, let's go hand out extra code. Though by extra code, I do mean we're handing out two codes total tonight. I do need to start handing out one per night. Uh, because of, uh, we're actually running low. Like, really low. Like, if we don't get more on April 1st, uh, we're gonna run out. <laughs> kind of low. However, um, we're actually going to one per day. But this will be a two day because we did get the perfect. <laughs> We're down to one per day, not counting Easter until uh, we get more codes. Otherwise, we're going to run out. Oh, we'll hand out two tonight. Because we did get the door. Same layout as last door, too, surprisingly. Oh, we got a pet, too. Not from this, though. <laughs> there we go. 120 Dragonite. Nice. Treasure Pile is doing good. Which after our last vault, we get everything. Where are we at right now? We're at 6,000. 256. We need about, like, what, 10,000 plus for the next Dragonite pool? So we should have it by then. We have, like, nine months to a year, assuming it's, like, the same interval, to get, um, like, 4,000 more Dragonite. That's very doable. Especially if we keep getting perfects like that. Anyways, uh, what do we have here? Pet Rescue. Oh, I do need this. Might as well go take it real quick. Oh, I still have old meta. Gosh, I have old, old meta. Oh, that was, like, the, when Stellarix first came out meta. All right, let me go get the new, um, the new one. What am I looking for? Looking for Takshaka. Grab this. Put that there. Put that there. Put that there. Put that there. There we go. Gosh, a Stellarix team of Thrall. How dated are we going? <laughs> That's so last month. Hello, Miss Insane Witch. Welcome, welcome. Oh, yeah, that was a pretty hyped door. <laughs> That was one of the more fun guest the doors we've had in a while. I can't believe it actually worked out. It had so many layers. Yeah, we'll need to do the head-to-heads more often. I'm surprised that's the first time I've ever bothered doing it. I was thinking about it at times, but never bothered. <laughs> it's the first time we did the head-to-head. -head. It worked out as well. Though, of course, we could do a head-to-head -head for two that aren't even it. <laughs> like, we could do a head-to-head -head and it's the third one. You sent me extra code? Oh, thank you, Genki. You haven't been able to stream at all this month? Oh, no. Hope you get better soon. Oh yeah, I didn't check the thing on Discord, by the way. I need to go do that later. I always forget to check Discord. I, I like rarely ever touch Discord. Really need to, though. Because I, I really do want to check out that Power World thing. And if we are going to do a co-op world, I don't mind streaming that occasionally. Like, we could do Power World Day. Like, once a week or something. Because we currently, not uh, counting Gems of War, we currently don't do anything on, like, a weekly basis. We used to do that with, like, Animal Crossing for a little while when it came back in 2020 and some other things like that. But we it's been a while since we've something, done something non-Gems of War related on a weekly schedule. I guess last year we technically did it for Old School RuneScape for a little while, but then we started to hit the grind wall, so we haven't been streaming it as much. But we probably, probably should be streaming it again this week. Also because they're doing a big update to their big update on Wednesday. So assuming Power World doesn't get the huge patch, then um, I'll probably be doing uh, Old School RuneScape that day, then. I still haven't finished all the new content yet. And one of the pieces of content I won't be able to. <laughs> it's meant for, like, super ultra end game. And we're still kind of in, like, the mid game, heading to late game kind of category. Alright, uh, click collect. How many do we get here? Two! Nice. Alright, uh, I think we need to do here. Yes, unless we have to do all of them. Yes, all of them. <laughs> Unfortunate. But only one of them's good, but uh, that's fine. Technically, two of them are good. Let's get a. No, that's Stellarix. That's the old meta team. Oh, that's the old meta team. Honestly, I should go get rid of that. I don't even use that anymore. There are some niche situations where you'd bring it out when you need curse and or bless. But otherwise, there's just not much of a use case for it these days. What's hello, G Shar? Welcome, welcome. Hope all's been well. If we were to do a weekly power stream, what day do you guys think it should be on? 
Like, if we were to make a server that's purely a co-op server that we stream whenever we stream, though it might still play on, like, uh, you know, our own private server thing, depending on what content comes out. But, um, we'd probably mostly stream on the co-op one. What day do you think would be best to always do it? Like, the co-op Pal World stream? If we were to have, like, an exclusively co-op world. Which I'm not still not even sure how that fully works. But we'll find out. Though I believe there's a cap to only four people that you can have on your co-op thing at once. I'm not sure if you can have more cycling through. I assume so. All you heard was Power World all day? <laughs> I don't know. If we do do a Power World stream, it probably would be for a while. How long it goes for really depends on our mood for it at the time. Or how much update they do. And obviously initially you'd play it a ton. But, you know, once you start hitting endgame, if they don't have, like, endgame content yet, it's, um... Like, they're adding it soon. But we don't really know at, like, what rate we're going to be getting endgame content or how fun the endgame content's going to be. Because currently, there's no endgame content in Power World. It's one of the reasons why the player base is kind of, like, dipped like crazy. Like, as a really solid early game, a really solid mid game. And then the rest isn't developed. <laughs> Which is why it's in beta. But, um... Like, it has a really good start. But then it runs out of content. It's Dark Snipe's birthday. Happy birthday, Dark Snipe. Also, hello, Earthbound, by the way. Welcome, welcome. Oh, uh, Earthbound. You ended up mentioning that. Oh, no. I didn't see that. Uh, happy birthday, Earthbound. I Somehow did I miss your message? Happy birthday, Earthbound. You want me to sing the uh, happy birthday for you? Let me know. And we shall. Sorry about that, I didn't see it with everything else. My bad. Hope you had a wonderful birthday today. Oh yeah, you mentioned that earlier too. You actually mentioned uh, the other day that it would be today. I forget who mentioned it, but yeah, it was you. <laughs> but happy birthday. And welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see. Because I remember someone mentioning that earlier, but I couldn't remember at the time who it was. I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful day. I underspire, still need to go buy the things. Obviously, we're not doing our battles today. One thing we do need to go do the battles for still, though, is PvP. Uh, we're mostly going to step our foot into the door in PvP, though. I'm not going to power grind it today, I don't think. Do it with Ta Takasha as well. Wait, what? You and Takasha? So, Earthbound and Takasha? <laughs> or what name do you want for it? <laughs> Could do any. But yeah, we'll definitely do co-op uh, Power World streams here and there. But yeah, if, if Wednesday's fine for everyone, yeah, I guess we can start doing it on Wednesday. I guess we'll start this Wednesday then. And I'll just do the uh, the other stream on Thursday. The one I was going to do for uh, Old School RuneScape. But yeah, we'll just do it on um, Wednesday then. That work. Alright. Uh, what are we doing? We did that. We did that. Uh, let's see. You're feeling worse? Oh, no! That's unfortunate. Hope you get better eventually. Also, how are we exactly one purple kill short of finishing this? Also, I still haven't bought into campaign pass yet. I still need to do that later. But the campaign pass is honestly so bad that I might just hold off for a little bit. <laughs> because honestly, there's not really much to even go over with it. Honestly, even once we get the mythic, what's there really to go over? Like, the Mythic's dead content already. In all fairness, quite a few of them have been for the season passes, but this one in particular. Like, I don't really see a single use case where it's really going to get out. Oh! Takashaka. <laughs> Wait, I'm still confused as what you mean by that, then. Do it with Takashaka as well. For your birthday song. I'm confused what you mean by that. <laughs> Is the only, uh, thing. Like, I think I understand, but I'm still slightly confused. Alright, uh, let's see. Also, because I'm trying to think of multiple things at once. Let me focus on one thing. Just trying to figure out what we need to go do right now. Otherwise, I'm, like, stun-locked right now. We did that, we did that. I need to kill one singular purple. Journey's done because we lost the Valraven. Like, cha-cha. <laughs> Wait, happy... Oh, I know what you mean. 
Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday to her found. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday to you. Taka shaka. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> like that? Because isn't that a thing where you sing happy birthday and you do like to cheer in between? <laughs> I'm not sure if it's normally cha ja, ja ja but it doesn't make sense for Takashaka. But, um, I'm not sure if that's right. But there we go. <laughs> I know that's, like, one way that Happy Birthday sometimes song, sung. Something along those lines. <laughs> we hope you had a wonderful birthday. Alright, uh, I'm still stunlocked, by the way. I've been literally menuing nowheres for a whole minute now. <laughs> Wait, are we just done with everything but PvP? Maybe that's why I'm stunlocked in menuing. I didn't realize we finished everything already, pretty much. All we have left is PvP, unless we want to go do Underworld. Which I'm probably just stalling till like, Wednesday, Thursday, like we normally do. Uh, we do have to run double Valhawk today, though, so I guess I'll... You know what? This would actually be a good day to grind PvP. Uh, we have to do it either today or Saturday. We just do it on Saturday. <laughs> I do... I, I will grind it some tonight. But, uh, I don't know. Let me check leaderboard. Oh, I can't. I forgot. <laughs> Wait. You don't have a leaderboard until you do a fight. I forgot about that. They actually fixed that. So if you do no fights, you'll actually maintain your rank. Uh, because that actually doesn't do anything until you do a fight. Well, let's go do a fight then real quick. What do we have access to? Oh, good. We have yellow. That's pretty free. That's, like, absurdly free. Uh, though first we gotta go build the team. Team built. Done. Okay. Uh, now we just gotta use the team. <laughs> Copy, paste, go. Hello, Ricardo. Welcome, welcome. Do I know how to dance to cha-cha? No. Uh, I can go through that one, though. Is that a little Rob? Welcome, welcome. Am I reciting a poem? <laughs> oh, we already found our first uh, Valhawk. Actually, we've been getting really strange luck on Valhawk recently. We've had the worst luck ever, and magically, as of recently. Oh, no! I just wasted a sigil. I forgot about that. You can still get one when you're at nine. Oh, no, no, no. We did. It doesn't cap at ten. Wait. Does it cap at ten in the sense... Okay, wait. Hold up. I've never had this happen before. Ten's not the cap. Eleven's the cap. Or does it go higher? Is it even capped? But yeah, we have 11. Whatever happened to 10 cap? I guess if you have 9, you get 2. So technically 11's cap. So now if we try going... For okay, here it goes. Okay, I see, I see. Oh, okay, I see. Oh, so you never will lose... Okay, that's cool. Because one thing I've been trying to do... Is to not waste... Um, Because I assumed it was a hard cap of 10. But it's not a hard cap of 10. I see what's happening now. Like, this is the first time we've ever seen this. But yeah, uh, I assumed when people were saying that's a cap of 10, that's a hard cap in the sense that if you get 2 at 9, you get to 10. But no, it's a cap of 10 in the sense that if you reach 10 or 11, uh, it'll stop giving you Val Valhawks. It says it right here. Valhawks will not appear in PvP battles while you have 10 or more monolith sigils. So, um, okay, so that's what's happening then. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, you, okay, that's good. Because I've been trying to avoid that so I don't lose a monolith sigil. But you actually will always get them. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Alright, nice. Also, um, what? A <laughs> uh, random thing just happened on my, um, other monitor thing. Um. Ah, well that's something to mention for when we do the RuneScape stream. <laughs> I just randomly got an absurdly rare pet while I'm just mining some new rock. That is so weird. <laughs> Remember that AFK mining method for any of you that might have watched the old school RuneScape stream? Um, we just randomly got the pet that takes like literally thousands of hours to grind. And we just randomly got it <laughs> while hitting a rock. I was wondering what that notification thing was. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> Anyways, another news. Gems of War. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's go do some PvP. So Valhawks, uh, they're actually pretty generous. Okay, I like how that system works then. Honestly, I actually am a big fan of the tweaks they've been making to PvP. I don't mind them. 
I also like how ignorable they are if you don't care about PvP. Like, every single update they've been doing to PvP, if you just don't care about PvP, you can ignore them and you'll be perfectly fine. That might change once we get some, like, more rewards and other stuff. But honestly, you can ignore it pretty effectively. I just realized, where's magic? Oh no, we got new perks here. Where's my magic? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Wait, wait, wait. Uh... Oh, there it is. No, 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 that's not it. Does anyone know if we have magic for color? Uh, because we have a lot of different ones this week. And I'm not seeing magic for same color here. Oh no. I know it's in here somewhere. Come on. Plus one magic for each purple ally. I need it for yellow though. But if we have to, we'll do that. Uh, purple ally. Do we not have yellow? Do we not have red? Oh no. Or am I just blind and I just didn't see it there? Oh, there it is. Gain one magic for each yellow ally. Okay, never mind. Oh, it's, it's still here. Why did I feel like the icon was different? Oh, it is! Oh! Wait, no, never mind. I thought it was doing an icon based on where you're fighting it. How did I miss this then? Never mind. Okay, it's still here. I'm just going crazy. <laughs> Wait, why is my team not saved though? Uh, we're allowed to use McGrim Woods. Oh, that's not ideal though. McGrim Woods team. But I'm going to be farming some, so I kind of have to go for it. Uh, let's see. What do we do? Oh, we have that. That's fine. Um, Honestly, McGrim's Woods synergy is not that good. The biggest issue with McGrim Woods is it's trying to be a beast team, but also used to be the war gear team or the war gear kingdom. And now it has a weird mix of war gear and beast without having proper synergy between either. Like, it has more of a beast synergy than a um, war gear. For sure. Oh, yeah, I also only have one of those dragons. That's not ideal. Wow, I do... This... This... These options are not good. Um... Hmm. What do we have for a good mana accumulation, then? I don't want to run the mana drain guy with Empower. We don't have access to too many good weapons. Doom Glaive's kind of cool, though. Um... So we'll go with that. We'll go with that. This is going to be a really clunky to get our bonus this week. I might not even do this area other than today when we do the big grind. Like, today and Saturday, when we actually go run uh, Double Boost, are probably going to be the only two days we bother. Wait, now that we know the thing, we don't actually have to run Double Boost tonight, do we? I just realized something. Because if we have 11 right now, we use 5, we're down to 6. We then do 2 Valhawks. Never mind, we only have to do 1 today. But that means we'd have to do Double tomorrow. I'd rather do Double tonight than tomorrow. So yeah, we'll still do Double, never mind. Anyways. Alright, um... I kind of want to use this, but I'm concerned about Spirit Gems mana draining us. Didn't we have an Underspire for this? What did I run for Underspire? I'm pretty sure it was this with, like, one other thing. It's just this team feels so clunky for what we're about to do battle-wise. Because the scaling on these battles are going to be really high. Ugh, honestly, I just don't even want to run it. I think I just run Cockatrice for safety. And just run it that way. I think that's all we do. Because I can't deal with this mana drain. It's just going to be too annoying. Uh, we're going to go purple green, I think. Uh, we're not using a lot of these colors, so I can just do something like that. And then set our class to Archmages. We could set something really tanky, but I want to make sure we get a ton of purple for that guy. Alright, because these are mean wind condition right now. So let's just go that way. Bit of a weird way to go about it, but we'll do it. Uh, so hello, uh, why, uh, why, how do you say that? Why, why music? Welcome, welcome. I can see music. I'm not sure how to pronounce uh, Y uh, W A. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. All right, what are we doing? Uh, let's see. Get that one over. Grab our other thing. That's not the way I wanted to go. <laughs> That's not how movement works. Yeah, maybe we don't do this category. We will today. But I think the rest of this week, I'm not claiming yellow magic if we have to do it on McGrim Woods. McGrim Woods is too annoying, to be honest. No Spirit Fox? I was considering it. If we do go Spirit Fox, it should be where Cockatrice is. Uh, we do get Spirit Fox resummon, though, if we die. Uh, the reason I went Cockatrice is just in case there's an annoying cast on Final Fight. Spirit Fox is definitely offensively quicker. But this is safer to not lose. I guess for the earlier fights, it would be more beneficial with Spirit Fox. But I mostly built this team assuming the final fight. 
Like, that's the one that's actually going to be annoying. These ones leading up to it are going to be pretty free. Oh, good. We actually get to utilize Skull Spam here. We're going to have some high spell reduction stuff here, and um, Skull Spam will be able to take it out really nicely. Oh, let's see. What do we need here? Grab the green over there. I've still been trying to figure out how I'm going to go cover old school RuneScape guides again. I've been meaning to on this channel for like ages now since I got back into the game. But I'm just not sure how or what to cover. <laughs> like I know what I want to end up covering to some degree. I just don't have the editing skills to do so. <laughs> because generally games have like a different quality standard. And I feel like old school RuneScape's quality standard is really high for uh, videos. Or something like Gems of War, we can easily get away with a completely unedited one-take kind of thing. Where you just naturally go over everything. And the game's structured in a way where it's a lot easier to do so. Because an average fight takes like, you know, a minute, not even. <laughs> so it's a lot easier to kind of go over stuff like that. Compared to things that need to be edited down like an absurd amount. I still never really did learn how to properly edit. Like, I know how, like, the basics of editing. But, uh, I'm very, like, entry-level when it comes to, like, editing a video. So why we don't have like real and that many like super highly produced videos on the channel. As I generally just don't know how to go about them a lot of times. Wait, you have immune? Oh no, wait, <laughs> that would explain why you still had mana. I casted it, saw it still had mana. It's like, wait, I need to go drain it again. <laughs> Not thinking it has immune because it's an elf. <laughs> Whoops. Mistakes have been made. That's funny. I, sh I should have known after the first cast that it didn't magically just get all of its mana back. That's really funny. I'll we'll take that one out. Are you just feeding back into... I just realized... You you know, you know, no, you can feed into something else. I was going to say, he's just feeding into himself with no other brown. But no, we do have something to feed him into. He's just not getting that much into it. I just realized something funny. I'd even try doing this. Oh, no, no, never mind. Not all three. I was going to say, all three of my things are directly man accumulating the color that we need for the thing. Oh, no, no, they are. Because, oh, that's really funny. I'd even try doing this. But Cockatrice is creating brown. A hero is creating purple, technically, because Archmages. And Spirit Fox is creating, um... Oh, no, 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 never mind. This one isn't. But yeah, two of our three colors are feeding back into them. Brown from this and purple from this. The only thing we don't have is uh, a blue. Which we could if we did the other in power, but I don't want to get mana drained off it. Hello, Outlander. Welcome, welcome. Oh, your uh, name got changed. Oh, I was wondering, because your icon looked familiar. But I always do it based on current name that's set. <laughs> I was going to say, your icon looks so absurdly familiar. There we go. Hello, Outlander. Welcome, welcome. That makes a lot more sense. Sorry about that. <laughs> I should have noticed from the icon. It just looks so familiar. I just couldn't put a name to it at the time. Just directly looking at it. Because I use a combination of, like, the name and the icon to remember people. So if one is different, I kind of completely forget. <laughs> because I use a combination of both. So if one's slightly tweaked. Uh, let's see. Take that one over. Also, we really need... Oh, gosh, this team. This is the last day of this week we run this, by the way. We are not running this every day. <laughs> we'll go insane. Uh, shouldn't even run it today, to be honest. It's just not worth it. The sad part is, we could actually lose this. It's very unlikely, though. Very possible. I think that'd be like the second time or third time we've lost one like this. Alright, oh, let's see. We'll throw that down. Grab the other thing. Oh, I'll take that over. Extra turn skull into extra turn skull. Into skull poke. Into extra turn green. Gosh, I would love to end my turn today. <laughs> I like having a lot of turn, but it eventually needs to stop. There we go. 
That was actually one really funny thing back in the day. Back in the day in Gems of War, we had a lot of like infinite mana loops before they nerfed a lot of them, but the damage output was really low. So there was actually situations where you would get too many extra turns and it would actually slow down your fight. We're getting too many extra turns would actually make the fight harder rather than easier. Because you're overall doing less damage compared to if you were getting less extra turns. It was actually an issue back in the day. These days that's not really the case because damage sources are absurd these days. As far as how much power we have with some things. But back in the day it was actually bad to get too many extra turns. As there was enough mana but not enough damage. Uh, for your last uh, week, you were uh, great. You did, were leveled up the class. You finished uh, your last Pure Faction 500. Nice. That's a great milestone to have. It's one of the few really nice things to have out of the way. I still have to say, I've, I feel like the best milestone to get out of the way, though. Like, out of every milestone in Gems of War, the most satisfying one is finally maxing all hero classes. Now, finally having Underspire, or Underworld done is nice. Because once Underworld is completed, you don't ever have to do the Underworld daily ever again. Which can save easily like a solid 20 minutes a day if you've been running running as a daily. Like it saves a, no a lot of time not doing it. I haven't done it in like five years. <laughs> hey, we finally took our first Bless Gem by not even destroying it directly. Or not our first first, but you know. First on stream, I believe. That's the first one we've taken all night. Obviously, it just blesses a random ally. You guys know what it does. It's pretty straightforward. It's not like it has some kind of elaborate special ability. You've activated my trap card. <laughs> Randomly bless an ally. <laughs> it gives it immune until it now acts out of it. As soon as it actually casts, if it could ever get mana. Well, am I doing something wrong? This battle feels so slow. It doesn't help that everything's going wrong. This feels like the slowest battle we've ever done to go get our metal upgrade thing. I'm never doing my Grimwoods again. That is awful. I'm pretty sure there's a slightly better team we could build for that, but I, we're not doing it again. That is horrifically bad. Uh, anyways, uh, we got our yellow bonus now. Let's go do yellow team. Are we going to double boost today or tomorrow? Let me just double boost today, I guess. Yeah, we'll do it today. Uh, um, Yeah, we'll do it today. So let me go get purple. Please tell me the team isn't horrific for that one, too. Uh, where's plus one magic per purple ally? Plus one magic for each purple ally. What do we have for here? We have access to Zolgoth. Oh, this is... Oh, no, no, no. Wait. Oh, it's just brown. Oh, oh, that's fine. I thought that was... Uh, never mind. I thought that was a Karakroth restriction for a second. I was like, hey, we have that for Underworld today, too. Um... Brown, brown. Obviously, we have Iron Gut. It's the first thing that comes to mind. We obviously have Stellarix. Oh no, did we just run Stellarix? I guess we just run Stellarix. Like, I was gonna try building a natural team, but, um, you know, we have Stellarix. <laughs> Why try? Uh, let's see. You know what, just for the fun of it, let's give him some support. Let's give him a Diamantina. Let's get him, um... What are we doing for brown mana accumulator, though, is the problem. Are we just going Wand? This is a wand, uh... I'm trying to think, what under brown is, like, really quick mana? And power is pretty underwhelming. We don't have, like, a proper mass destroyer. And power has, like, nothing. Unless we're running, like, a soothsayer. Here, I have a soothsayer. <laughs> What's this team? Uh, we'll go, like, Archmages. It doesn't even matter. It's just gonna die instantly anyways. Um, give us some brown something. Doesn't matter too much. What was I running for brown earlier? This team's definitely weaker, but we don't really need to be that strong. Brown is just really lacking good mana accumulators at the moment. Is everyone finishing at first place in PvP? Why? Is there something weird with PvP leaderboard? I didn't actually look at it yet. Why right, is something weird going on? I'll go check it after we finish out this set. And then we'll go to PvP for a little bit. I'm not going to do it all night. And I might grind a little bit later off stream. Because we have double boost, so if there's any time to do it, it would be right now. Uh, the biggest issue is we don't have a good Bloodthirsty, though, tonight. So we can't get the best rate possible.
You know what? Uh, I'll, I'll make a deal. If I need less than 10,000 to make um, first place, we'll do it tonight. Oh, but then there's the hour boost. Wait, hold up. I would have to delay it at least one day. Oh, maybe we should have done the double boost tomorrow because I forgot. We actually have to stop at 5,700. Because unless we're planning on running a whole hour boost, which I definitely do not intend to do tonight. Uh, we have to stop so we can get the extra 1,000. That's still a feature glitch that's occurring. Alright, one more fight. No, you don't need to get first place today. You only got to level 19 and you got first place. Oh yeah, I got first place too with my second place. Uh, all you have to do is be on someone else's leaderboard. There's currently a glitch feature in the game where um, you don't have to be top three of your own leaderboard. You just have to be top three of anyone's leaderboard that you are partaking in. It doesn't matter which one. Obviously, you can't see all the other ones. They are invisible to you and you have no clue that they exist. However, all you have to do is make first place on any singular leaderboard and you will get or any rank on any singular leaderboard and you will win. Oh, so I just realized, we might actually lose to Vashtagon. Because I'm not paying attention to his fight at all. And we might actually legitimately lose this. Uh, he has heavy true splash. I'm actually gonna die to Vashtagon. Good thing we have the extra sigil. <laughs> wait. Hold up, we just legit died to Vashtagon. Oh, third death for the pile. What do I even change? Hero? Tank? I guess? Fine, I'll go Elementalist. So we have, uh, protection against it. Yes, first place glitch and, uh, uh, third place glitch and all the places glitch is still available. They haven't fixed that yet. You just have to place on anyone's leaderboard to get credit for it. You don't have to place in your own leaderboard. Obviously, placing in your own leaderboard guarantees that it will happen. Uh, what's happening? Um, since when is this team good? <laughs> This will be the first time ever we actually lose because of, uh... My tank just died. He was supposed to be the thing that makes it so we don't die. And he just died. We might actually lose. I need my first slot to take no d What on earth is going on?! <laughs> Are we gonna have to buy more? Just to get the boost thingy? Or just live without the extra victory tokens? I need Stellarix to infinite loop right now without him getting a single poke of damage. I have to try for blue off the of sky, though it's a little bit riskier. But I have to go for it. If a skull falls anywhere here, we lose. Okay, it fell, but we got extra turn. Okay, I need Stellarx to infinite loop or we lose. Okay, one. Come on, Stellarx. Don't fail, Snail. Two. Come on, two. Three more. Three. Perfectly balanced troop that doesn't need to be nerfed at all. No! It doesn't need to get... <laughs> See, it's perfectly balanced. It can lose. That's actually sad. We just double loss on this. <laughs> I'm not going to bother buying the thing for four victory tokens, though. We're just forever going to be shamed with having one less <laughs> victory token thing. Oh, no, no. I can do it with my other Valhawk. Never mind. We can still do it. Never mind. Hold up. We still have two Valhawks. Fossil Alarm. We can still go get it. Okay, we need to go change our team or something, though. What just happened? Because I was looking over at chat the whole time while playing both fights. What happened in either of those two fights? <laughs> How did we lose half our team immediately both times? I'm confused as to what's killing us. Like, how are we insta-dying at the start of every fight every time? Alright, let me pay attention the whole time. Let me stop glancing over at chat. Let me focus this entire time to figure out what on earth is happening here. <laughs> because both times we're like, insta-loss. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm gonna go grab the buff. Hey, something's happening here. Here, Soothsayer, go in first slot or something. <laughs> go in, like, um, tank for everything. Just in case. Alright, I'm gonna pay attention to every single thing that happens this entire fight. Alright, we'll take that over. We're gonna ultra try hard this right now. <laughs> uh, we'll take this one. So we can get the Skull Cascade. We then cast Wand. It's a lot easier when you're fully paying attention. Uh, we throw that down. Throw that down. But yeah, what was killing us earlier? I need to go look at the footage. Because I don't understand how we lost this twice. This is such a free win fight. 
Which is why I wasn't paying attention and looking over at chat. But, um, how do we lose this twice? <laughs> this is such a free win. Like, there's nothing here that can really kill you. That's so weird. Like, that's how it should have been the first time. <laughs> there we go. Anyways, let's go do some PvP now. Uh, where's ladder? Wow. Well, let's go get second place. <laughs> Did everyone give up on PvP? I know people hate PvP now, but, uh... I don't know, let me do a poll. Have you given up on PvP in the current state of the game? Just yes or no. No extra details. <laughs> Would you say you've given up? <laughs> Generally speaking, yes or no. No other in-between votes uh, for now. I'm just curious. Oh no, those other QB are being slow all of a sudden. That's so weird. Why was the other poll no lag at all? And now when I want to make another poll, it's, it wants to lag for forever. I clicked the button like three times and it hasn't done anything. There we go, start a poll. Alright, let me do some battles while we're waiting. It's being a little slow. So let's hand out the other code too, uh, once we finish out this poll. Or get this poll up. Alright, uh, let's see. Uh, have you given up on PvP in the current state of the game? Question mark, yes, no. There we go. I'm just curious if this is over 50%. Because based on my leaderboard, that should be like a 70% uh, poll right there. On yes, given up. <laughs> based on the numbers I'm seeing in PvP. Because, yeah, it, it, my leaderboard right now is no one. <laughs> like, everyone is, just did zero battles, basically. Also, can you guys see the poll? It's not updating on my other thing. It says zero votes, but on my other one it says 15 votes, but I can't see it on the one that says 15 votes. I'm so confused. <laughs> I can see on my other computer that there's 15 votes, but on my slower one, it says no one has voted yet. <laughs> Gosh. It's a little behind. So I can't actually see, even see what the results are right now. <laughs> It'll update in a moment. There it goes. I have 53% yes, yeah, so it's more like a 50-50. 56% yes. 95 or 59% yes. It's moving up slowly. It's getting there. You're in Diamond, and right now your top rank is 7888. Yeah, it's still pretty low. Like, that's an hour of PvP, though I guess it is Monday still. Not a lot of people have bothered doing their fights yet. Which is another thing to put into consideration. Man, yeah, we're 100% going for rank 2 right now. Might as well. Not gonna take that long. Like, we're pretty much already there. <laughs> But yeah, we'll keep streaming till we get ranked too. 100%. It's literally 2,500 right now. I think we can manage. And that's probably how long we'll go for as well. Also, let me go hand out the code. I said I would. Uh, this will be the second code. Though do keep in mind, we will be handing out one code going forward uh, until Easter. In which case, we should have two, hopefully. As well as a special Easter code. With that being one to two. But um, I'm actually running really low on codes. Actually, let me do a head count real quick. One... Two, three, four, five, six. Today's Monday. So I have exactly enough codes to hand out one per day and two on Easter. Because I have a seventh code that's the Easter one. But yeah, I have exactly enough codes. Though Genki did say she gave me a few, so I do have those as backup if we need. Also, thank you, Genki, by the way. Greatly appreciate it. But, um... Okay, so yeah, we'll be fine. We have enough for the rest of the month. And then if I have to, I'll start dipping into Genki codes. I'll try not to use them if I don't have to. But I have exactly enough to last till April 1st. Without touching them. Oh, I should have taken the red there. Whoops. And we'll still have two on Easter. One will be the normal code and the other one will be the uh, special pet. Which one it is? I don't remember. But it's one of the old pets. Plus, don't forget to get the in-game one this Wednesday. Oh, we're about to lose. Oh, we're about to so lose. We are so dead. Perfectly balanced troop with no issues. <laughs> All 
Uh, let me pick a team that doesn't have Stellarix on it. And or Takshaka. Yeah, it's actually pretty easy to get to Diamond in the current state of the game because it keeps bringing you up ranks, regardless. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're going to tweak that in the future. Because the way that PvP currently works, it's going to be oversaturated with people in Diamond rank. Like, nearly the entire game is going to be in Diamond rank. I think it was originally meant to kind of, like, divide people off a little. But due to the fact that you can get, like, 10th place and still move up a rank... Like, you know, in your bracket, but still overall in someone else's bracket, move up. Because of that, it is basically free to get to Diamond for the most part. As long as you're, like, doing PvP each week and doing it to a degree that's, like, um, like you know, at least a slightly above the minimum. And by that, I mean, like, you know, the 6,500 you need and everything like that. Like, if you do 10,000 in pretty much every bracket, you will eventually move up a rank. Even if you only did 10,000 in a week. Which, if you're doing 6,500, you're already at 7,500. So if you did like 2,500 more than that every single week, you'd pretty much auto get into Diamond in the current state of the game. Which is kind of funny. Let me go double check how many more points do we need. You should go by pretty quick. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know what? I almost want to do a Bloodthirsty. What do we have? Cinder Mirage? Ha <laughs> ha, no. No. Or Forest of Thorns. Hmm. The problem with Forest of Thorns... ...is our main win condition... ...doesn't scale to higher stats. Like, them having 50% more stats will be a problem with what we have access to. Like, whenever you do a, a side one like this, if you're going to do Outer Ring, it has to be something like Kazale, where you have access to something like... Uh, oh, sorry, that's not the one I thought. I thought it was, thought that was Karakaroff. But you need to have access to, like, a good insta-kill option or something similar if you're going to do Outer Ring. Without it, it's going to be too slow because the team comps you have are going to be a lot worse. Like, even if you did have Karakaroff, like, yes, you have Zolgoth, but the synergy you have for Zolgoth is a lot worse. But you'll still be able to get away with it because you have Zolgoth. It's kingdoms like that that you'll be able to have, like you'll actually be able to do for under, uh, for under, for PvP. I mean, I will eventually say the right move. I've done problem for the code, everyone. If anyone's losing on the question, if anyone wants me to go over, let me know. Otherwise, we're pretty much just messing with PvP the rest of this time. That's Bill, but I don't remember which one that is. Wait, isn't that last year's pet? Isn't that like 2022 or 2023? That's kind of weird. They've been doing a lot of them that's been like really old ones. Like 2017, 2018. Like around there. Yeah, that one's pretty recent, if I'm not mistaken. That was like a year or two ago. I judge you better when they do the older ones because it's more likely people don't have it. Like, if they do a pet from, like, 2018 or 2019, it's a lot more likely people don't have it rather than 2023. Oh, yeah, a Bill Warhammer just mentioned it. Yeah, that's the 2023 pet. Huh. I think that's one of the more recent ones they've done. Well, obviously, it was last year's, but, I mean, for our pet codes, that's, like, the most recent one they've done. Because a lot of our pet codes, codes have been older pets, but that one's basically just came out last year. That's a little unfortunate. Because that means a lot of people already have it. But, I don't know, I guess anyone who just started in the last year... We'll be able to go get it if they didn't already from uh, last e year's Easter. I mean, that's a little unfortunate. I hope they don't keep doing it that way. Like, it's still nice that we have it. But if we're just getting last year's pet, uh, a lot of people will already have that. More often than not. Compared to one years upon years back. It is a lot more likely people don't have it. You got the Takshaka pet today? Nice. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I don't even think I have the Takshaka pet. To put into consideration how strong this thing is without even having pet is kind of insane. Not like the pet does much, but you know. Fight all stats adds up. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I am actually am missing it. I didn't bother buying it for five bucks. I was just going to wait till we got it naturally. 
But if anyone in my guild, if you ever see Takshaka pet, please, like, ping me everywhere. <laughs> I probably won't notice it because I barely ever check Discord. But if we ever have the Takshaka pet, I need, like, every notification in existence <laughs> to let me know <laughs> that there's a Takshaka ready to go. Because last time we needed one of those, it took me over a year to finally get it. And I'm hoping Takshaka doesn't take nearly as long because he's actually really relevant. He'll probably be nerfed by the time we can actually get a copy of him. <laughs> but yeah, he's the, uh... He's basically the only pet we're missing, not counting the uh, other things. Because the only ones that are not checked off here uh, are all the PvP pets. And the new pet that technically isn't here either. There's 10 PvP pets. There's the one from the Season Pass that we'll get once we get around to that. Uh, though it's not even here because no one can own it yet. I think you get it on like the second or third or fourth week or something. Uh, but yeah, the only one we're missing are the 10 PvP pets and Takshaka. The Takshaka's Worm. It gives uh, ten, 5 to all stats to Takshaka once max. Or plus 2 to all once you initially get it. It's not that big a deal because in most battles you're just using it for final trait. You're not actually casting it. However, um, you know, he's, he's meta enough that a little bit extra stats goes a long way. Even just 2 to all stats, that's a ton of true damage. That's effectively 4 extra true damage per cast. That's up really quickly. Especially if you're actually spam casting him rather than just letting him sit there doing gems. But for the way that we use him, he doesn't actually gain that big of a benefit from it. So I'll only go grinding in pure color zone. Oh yeah, uh, as far as PvP grinding, there are only two areas you should ever be in in the current state of the game. Like Outer Ring is basically unplayable right now in PvP. Um, but there's only two sections you ever do. Central Spire is the easiest. This used to be considered the hardest. The reason it's the easiest now is the reason it was hardest earlier is it was still picking up some teams from the previous format, whereas the other ones were just doing random junk teams. Whereas now all areas properly pick up teams from what people have recently used, which is how it was supposed to function to begin with. But now it does actually function that way as of the other week, one week ago. But now that that's fixed, uh, there's no downside to doing Central Spire. Literally none. So the easiest place to do battles is Central. The only reason you would do a pure color is if you have a really, really absurdly strong team in pure color that you feel like you can take out everything else with. But even then you just run that on Central. Like, if you have something really strong that kind of goes against uh, what's, like, meta there, you could end up doing it. Like, for example, you don't want to do yellow, necessarily. Because that's where everyone's going to be running this team. But let's say it's something like brown. Like, let's say you're missing, like, a lot of decent options. But you have, like, a few good brown troops, like Iron Gut or something. Like, it would be beneficial, then, to potentially run brown. As the meta's not being ran there. Uh, everyone's running the meta in yellow. Like, this is where everyone's going to be. Um, so if you have, like, a really good green comp that you want to run with Leprechaun or just want to run brown with whatever you have that's decent, uh, you might get better value than these other ones. But worst comes to worst, if in doubt, just run Central Spire in the current state of the game. It should overall always be the easiest. Because this is where everyone who doesn't have any options at all are doing their battles. And because of that, uh, if everyone just keeps going there who don't have any options also do their battles, it'll just lead to a perpetual cycle where... Um, It'll, it's just going to be the easiest place. <laughs> because it's, it, everyone who has the meta is running it in the more like color-specific locations. So all you really have to do is just spam central. <laughs> and then more people spamming central with weaker teams also creates more weaker teams. That then makes it even easier and just keeps perpetuating the cycle. That's basically what's happened to Central Spire at this point. It's like the last resort place when you have nowhere is better to go because you don't have other options. So it keeps filling it with weaker teams, but because it keeps filling it with weaker teams, it keeps uh, making it more accessible for people with weaker teams and leads to a perpetual cycle where basically Central Spire is only weak teams. Like, you'll still see the meta occasionally, but it'll pop up far less than in any other location. Because Central Spire is basically composed of uh, whatever people can scrap together because you're allowed to use anything. But yeah, definitely Central Spire. 
It was a huge buff to Central Spire. It basically isn't any location other than Central Spire now, for the most part. Because, yes, you'll still see this. But why fight this when you can fight, like, Zolgoth insta-kill? Or nothing. <laughs> this team's actually solid. It's just, um... The, the power creep has hit hard. <laughs> i catch you later, Mr. Sandwich. Have a good night. Alright, oh, let's see. I'll take that one. I right, should only need a few more fights until we have enough, I'm pretty sure. I'll throw that down. Get our wand. Oh, I don't even need wand. Gosh, the weaker fights. <laughs> Just get one shot in. Let's see, did we hit top two yet? Almost. So close yet so far. Hey, we hit top three. <laughs> let's go tank rank two. That's so sad that this is enough to hit rank two. And the poll currently says 61% as far as people not bothering with PvP. My guesstimate earlier was that it would be closer to 70%. Yeah, I guess that checks out. So anyone watching the stream is probably slightly more active than a normal player, though. So I wouldn't be surprised if actually 70% of the player base gave up on PvP. But of course, people who are more active in the game are less likely to um, opt out of it. Honestly, I don't mind at the moment, but that's because we are, like, literally max stats with uh, everything in the game. Obviously with weaker options, particularly not owning Stellarix. Uh, PvP is probably a nightmare. Like, you don't need Stellarix to do PvP right now, but um, it definitely simplifies things. You also don't need Tokshaka to do PvP right now. But once again, it is helpful. <laughs> There's still alternatives, though. You still have Tesla, you still have Beatrix, you have Truffle, you have... Um I think the other like really good. You still have insta kill. Like you still have iron get Zolgoth. Like that still beats um like every um Stellarix team. Like if you can stop them from getting their initial bless, just Zolgoth their wand, and then devour their Stellarix. Uh, Diamantine and Stellarix have no immune to status effects. The only thing that gives it to them is wand. But if you just insta kill their wand with uh, Zolgoth, you win, because then you can insta kill everything else with Zolgoth and or iron gut. And then it's over. Ah, the Void Dragon. Void Dragon's in a weird in-between. Like, it's not a bad troop. But when you have better, you'd never run it. It's an issue that a lot of troops have. Because this troop is really good. But it's not good enough to be better than the best options. Which is an issue a lot of troops run into. But some have had immunity to it. Just because they do something unique enough. Like Zolgoth Catharix. They have not fallen off. While they're not as useful in the current state of the game. Unless you're playing really specific game modes. Like really high level delves. Um... They still are unique in what they do. And anything that ever has that kind of category to them, like Beatrix, for example. Uh, the true damage off of Beatrix keeps falling off further and further as we keep damage power creeping. But she still has four times cleanse. Like, that that's still really, really, really solid. And she still has some extra turn potential while doing true damage broke. It'd still be your cleanup option when you need one right at the end of a battle. And stuff like that or mechanics they really need to start adding more are things that do things that are so unique that even if they fall off the meta, they're still useful. Just because of what they do, nothing else can do. I know this becomes increasingly harder as we are closing on uh, 1,500 troops. So getting something that does something like purely unique compared to everything else, you know, increasingly harder to do. But it's definitely possible to get more stuff like that. I feel like we just get too much content that's just dead on arrival. Where it's so bad that it's just never going to see a use case. Unlike something like Void Dragon, that's bad in the sense that it's not bad, but it's power crept out of the game. Like, it's usable, but once you have better stuff, you don't use it. There's a couple different categories of troops. Ones that are just completely useless. 
Uh, ones that are good in premise, but they get power crept out by other stuff to the point that once you get the better stuff, you just don't use them. For example, there's a lot of alternative Zolgoths that you don't use basically once you own Zolgoth. That were basically added as alternatives prior to when you get them. Then there's the category of, um, like, utility troops that you don't use that often, but they always get a use case eventually, where they have just such a niche ability. Like, let's say Leshy, for example. Leshy is a common troop that does four, uh, say, eight times entangle. It entangles your all your allies and all your enemies. This is very unique and very rarely useful. But it's so unique that it can be useful. Because there's times, let's say, when the enemy's running charm, where you want to be entangled so the enemy can't charm you. There's instances where uh, you just might want a really consistent four times entangle, and you don't really care if your team's entangled. Like, there's really niche instances where you can end up um, utilizing it. And we need more like that. We need more leshies. <laughs> Things that are so absurdly situationally use case. But they're actually useful for that use case. Like, uh, one that still exists, Mercy. She was the first Empower Troop to ever exist in the game. She's still useful. Reason being, other than just her convert, she's Empower Cleanse. Uh, she is uh, one of only two ways. They did that another way. Um, Sister Superior. She's used on the Dust Devil team. Uh, though more so for damage, oddly enough, even though she does no damage. Um, but uh, she's the other one that has Cleanse. But for the longest time, she was also the only one that had Empower Cleanse. But even with two Empower Cleanses, they're both still used. Uh, one of the Empower and Cleanse is used for Quick Kill Dust Devil. And the other Empower Cleanse is used on Mercy, where you get the uh, Mana Convert. So even though there's two of them in the game, they're both still used. And we need more troops like that. Like, things that just fit a very, very niche purpose. Where you're definitely going to only use it, like, barely ever. But it can be used. It's not, like, something that's so bad that you're just going to cross it off as ever an option. I don't know. They can work towards that over time. They've been still doing that occasionally. I just feel like almost every troop that ever comes into game should be like that. Whereas right now, it's like 20% of new troops that ever come in are unique enough to be in that category. Oh, so I would love to not die, please. Thank you. <laughs> uh, sad part is, we're probably going to have to kill him with Takshaka. Uh, we are definitely going to have to kill him with just Takshaka. Hmm. Unfortunate. But it must be done. Don't kill us. Don't kill us. No! We just lost the wand! We just got double killed off a wand loop. No, oh, we can't end on that. Let's do one more fight. Because I think we uh, technically reached our rank. Yeah, rank two. Well, that was quick. Gosh, no one doing PvP. <laughs> Where did everyone go? We're all alone. <laughs> Where is everyone? Right, let's go fight a Stellarix team. May the best Stellarix win. Is next month Mythic near as good as Takshaka? Oh, no. I haven't looked at it yet. We go peek at it to end off the stream as well. We'll check it to end out uh, the stream tonight. I haven't actually even looked at it yet, so I'll go see what it is. Might as well. Alright. Let's go see what this troop can do. So, new Mythic next month. Let's take a peek. Uh, it's actually... Oh, wait. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, no, no, no. It's next month. I was going to say, is it this Friday? I forgot. No, it's not this Friday. Easter's on the last day. Um, Yeah, next week's Friday. Is next Mythic. Alright. Um, Alright, let me go check. Troop spoilers. Oh, we're already here. How oh, perfect. All right, let's go take a uh, look at it. Is it a charm mechanic? That's funny. I was just mentioning Leshy for anti-charm. See, he might his niche might come out. <laughs> we were just talking about him. If you ever need an anti-charm option, go put a Leshy on your team. He's literally a common. Yet is actually useful. Where is this mythic? Uh, there it is. All right, what do you do? Open a new tab. All right, what does this mythic do? Uh, Succubus Queen. So if I had to guess, based on someone just saying Charm, I think it was Genki. If I had to guess, um, this is basically Lust, but Mythic. So let's see what she does. Succubus Queen. Mythic, Blighted Lands, Daemon, Mystic. There's no way this thing is 50% Daemon Star, right? No, it'd have to be on a Legend. Um, 22 mana cost, red, yellow, green. She charms an enemy, steals magic plus 2 life, and it summons 1 to 3 Succubi... Or Incubi. No, why don't you summon Lust? That would have been so funny if you got to summon one to three random Lusts. In all fairness, that's not the right kingdom, but still. Um, this is useless, right? This does nothing. Wait, what's its final trait? Steal two life from the first enemy when matching red gems. Yeah, this is just completely useless. 
It charms an enemy. Steals a bunch of magic plus life. Summons one to three. Uses troops. But I think one does a man accumulator. Um, and has no traits at all. It literally has zero traits on. Um, I guess it is a little bit spell bulky. He gets to steal the life, and he gets to steal life there. But compared to, like, an AoE lifesteal, I'd rather use that than use this thing. Even at 20 mana cost. Like, I'd rather just use Weaver at that point. Um, yeah, this thing does basically nothing. Its summon isn't particularly good. Its final trait does almost nothing. There's a little bit of spell reduction to go while its lifesteal, but that's not really going to do too much ultimately. Um, and there's no follow-up. It doesn't have any mana accumulation. You don't get to create a bunch of gems. Uh, its coloration will probably be pretty useful when you're restricted to Bladed Lands, though, I do have to say. Um, green and yellow in particular. Particularly green. Green, I'm pretty sure, like, zero Bladed Land troops are pretty much green. So this is probably the strongest green Bladed Land troop. So whenever we have a restriction like that, she'll probably make some play. Um, because our alternatives are basically non-existent. Because this place is pretty low in green. We have that thing that does nothing. We have this guy that does nothing. Um... We have these guys that do nothing. So yeah, he she is the strongest green and bladed land. It's like the biggest thing she has going for it. She'll be able to help cover every single last color when you're running some of the more standard bladed lands teams. It'll actually allow you to cover like five, six colors. But beyond that, I don't really see her doing anything. But yeah, if they summoned one to three lost, that would be really funny. But yeah, I don't see the use keys for this. Like what, what's she supposed to do? She's not the best Charmer. She's not the best Life Stealer. She's not even the best single target Life Stealer. Though she does steal pretty heftily. Uh, it is double magic. Um, her summons are not particularly noteworthy. And they really could have made them Charm summons like Lust or something similar. Like ones that can naturally do it automatically. Not ones that have to cast for it. Um, her final trait's nearly non-existent. If I'm not mistaken, doesn't Iron Gut do more than that? Doesn't Iron Gut do like three life steal? I know that's not the main reason you use Iron Gut, but doesn't he have three life steal per brown? Steal four life from the first enemy when matching brown gems. Why on earth does she only do two? Iron Gut does four per brown, which is a mechanic you never use on him. You basically assume he has no traits because his whole value is in his ability. But um, he steals four magic per brown. Why does she only steal two magic per red? That's so bad. If there should be anyone who steals four, it should be her. Should be that you use it. They didn't even have four. I don't feel like it would be used. Um, yeah, I don't see this ever getting used, unfortunately. There's just no use case for anything. She's not good at charming. Her single target lifesteal is fine. But she's not going to be used just for that. Her summon's pretty underwhelming. Uh, she has some spell reduction to go with her durability, but that's not really going to get her that far without Impervious. And her lifesteal is literally half of things like Iron Gut for some reason. Even Yagwe, I think, does... Wait, well, how much does Yagwe do? Doesn't Yagwe do, like, three... Doesn't a legendary troop do more than this mythic? Steal three life from the first enemy when matching red. Why, why is her ability two? <laughs> I think that's the most baffling thing for me here. Why doesn't she steal like five or something? Like a number that actually matters. Or even more than that. Or even add bleed to it. Or make it so she summons lust. Like any number of things. Yeah, literally a legend has more life steal than her. <laughs> this is even a life steal troop. Similar to Iron Guy. And it also has more. But yeah, he steals um, three life from the first enemy when matching red. Yet the Mythic steals two life from an enemy when matching red. I don't understand. Unless they update that to like five before she comes in, I don't see her ever getting used. And even then, that's still situational. But yeah, I don't see any use case, unfortunately. It's just going to be a dead content Mythic. But it is a Blade of Lands Mythic. Blade of Lands is a magic-based kingdom, so you do need to eventually get it for that. Um, actually, I think it might be pretty close to 30 star, too. I don't think it's getting 30 star. I think that's like 28 or 29 star. Actually, we can check on Terran's run. Let me go double check so I know for the Friday video. I mean, uh, next week's Friday, not this week's Friday. Uh, this week's Friday's Bounty Hunter. Nothing really relevant there. We're not covering a video for I normally don't for Bounty Hunter. Uh, though we're getting this troop for any of you wondering. It creates eight green gems and summons zero of the three of itself. What's with all the summoners recently? They're in a real big summoner kick all of a sudden. But anyways, uh, I'm trying to get back to main menu. What was I going to go do? I was going to go check... Um, uh, oh, sorry. It was probably loud. <laughs> I was like full-blown clapped into the... <laughs> slammed my hands together. I'm trying to think. Um, I was about to go do something. I already forgot what it was. It's something related to the mythic, I think. Oh, oh yeah, I was going to check Kingdom Power. Ah, uh, Kingdom Power, Kingdom Power. I'm trying to see what Blade of Lands gets to. 
Well, I landed just to 29. Yeah, I knew it wasn't 30. But yeah, 29. It's pretty close, but not quite there. Whenever it hits 30, we get another plus one permanent magic. But it still has a little ways to go. It could be all the way till the end of the year before we see it. But yeah, it does reach 29 as of um, uh, next week's Friday. Not this week, but next week. But anyways, guys. Uh, I think we'll end it there. But yeah, next Mythic, unfortunately, pretty dead content. It has a lot of single target true damage, but um, if you want that, just do Tak Shaka. Like, yes, it has life steal, but there's better things that have life steal too. Like, honestly, I'd rather use Draculus over her. And that's basically dead content these days too. It has lower mana costs. It'll overall hit more damage, even though the single target damage will be less. And when it does a thing, it actually gets an okay amount of life. It's not used for that purpose, but I can't believe she only does two. I think that's the most baffling part. Why is it not at least five? Iron Gut literally does four. A, a legend that already does it on red does three. Why does she only do two per red? That's so low. Even at five, that's not like going to make her magically better. <laughs> but at least, like, why not? <laughs> if you're going to make a trip like that, at least make it a number that's relevant. I guess maybe they're scared of making it ever eventually too high that becomes like the meta for killing Explorer uh, more than what Dust Devil already is. Though in all fairness, they can't be worried about that. Dust Devil's already so insane. <laughs> you can't barely can physically even get quicker than that. But anyways, guys, we'll end it there for now. Thank you so much for stopping by. As always, greatly appreciated. Feel free to leave a like on the stream. Helps a lot and is also greatly appreciated. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night. Uh, same time as always. Uh, hour, or hour and a half prior to now tomorrow. And, um, you know, we'll mostly be messing with the faction. Getting a little bit further in PvP. Probably get all the way up to the uh, point where we can get the double-double. And then on Wednesday, maybe we'll throw the full burst down. And uh, Wednesday or Thursday, we'll also throw a bunch of Underspire. We also have like 100-something keys we need to go run. Also, I still have a couple of my XP boosters between all these keys. I should probably use them all at some point. Not sure what we'll use it on. I'll just do it when we're messing with some PvP later. I'm not sure. I'll just run a bunch of standard Dust Devil. Well, we'll use that at some point. Because I haven't even claimed all those Volt keys there yet. My Volt key number isn't even 300 because I didn't bother claiming them. But we will later. I just want to do it off of a claim all. I just don't want to manually click them a billion times. It would take like three minutes for me to manually click them all, which I guess isn't that big a deal. But <laughs> why do that when you just click one button later and just get it all done at once? But anyways, guys, hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will catch you guys later. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching.